I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! So, everybody, welcome back to the Big Apple Hockey's Bar Talk segment, where we, uh, where we gauge NHL topics based on our toy, to, a toy, our choice of drink. <laughs> oh, wow! There were too many words going through my head all at once. And on this edition of Mark Can't Speak, <laughs> well, at least it's better than Cockney Emmy. I mean, oh, geez. I'll give you a pass on that because that name can kind of be a little. Yeah, it's it's sort of like could can you change it just 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 to Niemi or well, something? Spanish I don't know. games are hard at times. I know Kako is very easy. Thank you, Capo. Uh, so anyway, yeah. All right. So Sean Couturier's deal will make Mika Zibanejad's ads new deal a little bit cheaper. We'll say it like that because it was kind of going to go long. Phil to you. Yeah, um, I'm going to buy around on this. Uh, Sean Gattori's deal is going to keep Mika Zibanejad more to the eight eight and a half billion range rather than the, I'm going to say rumored very loosely because while I have a lot of respect for Larry Brooks, he tends to sometimes have reporting informative type pieces and then he has musing type pieces, which is fine. But... Larry Brooks had a musing that Mika Zibanejad could be asking for $10 million. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so I, I think Sean Couturier and his new deal will keep Mika Zibanejad more so in a ballpark that the Rangers would be comfortable signing him to. So I'm, I'm buying everybody around on this. Anthony. Yeah, I'm going to go around too. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think Zibanejad – He's going to get 10 million. And, you know, you know, I know Svechnikov was an RFA, but, you know, he got 7.75. Katori at 7.75. Um, you know, Zibanejad, uh, you know, probably score more than Katori, but Katori is on another level defensively. I mean, this is like a selfie type guy. Um, but overall, I, I think it, it will keep Zibanejad in this, in that range, eight, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. Um, so I'm full agreement with, there, with Filk on that one with the round. I, I'd be shocked if he still got, you know, nine and a half or ten. Uh, unfortunately, I got to go beer. And the reason why is because if he puts up another 40-goal season, it don't matter uh, what Sean Couturier got or what Svechnikov got. I mean, he had 41 in 56 two seasons ago. He was um, unhealthy to start the season. And then now, I mean, and he's also going to be UFA. UFAs want more money. So you, you you can't really bridge them that much. Uh, I, that's just the way it is. Tomas Hurdle is a better and more risk, more realistic trade option for the New York Rangers than Jack Eichel. I'll start this one off, guys, and it's I'm buying everybody around on that. More realistic and um and a better option because they don't have to give up that much. You don't have to worry about surgery, and on top of it. Uh, he's, this is his last year of his deal. Go Rangers could go get him tomorrow. If they want to, they can get him at the trade deadline if, if they want to. And he wants out and he's affordable. I think it's only six, uh, just under 6 million or around 6 million. So Phil. Yeah, uh, definitely. He has one year left on his deal. As you stated, uh, it's at 5.625 million. Um, if they're looking to re-sign him long-term, I'm, gonna say he could be anywhere in the range from 6.5 to 7.5 million if you can get him and Mika Zibanejad locked up for about 16 million combined AAV um you not only set your center depth at your one two positions for the foreseeable future because Hurdle's still young enough to be with this team fits right in with their timeline because they want to compete sooner than later and you gain much needed cap flexibility as opposed to adding Eichel, even though he's younger, with the extra three and a half million that it would take uh, on the AAV. And you don't have to worry about the major neck injury that um, Eichel has. So uh, I'm buying everybody another round on this. <laughs> and I'll have to put that up again. Anthony, going to you. Um, I'm buying everyone around as well. Um, All right, I can just leave it up. I, I, 
I have Clean sweep times two. Um, like you said, his age still fits in with the Rangers are looking to do. Um, he doesn't have a neck injury. Um, he's he makes a very very reasonable amount of money right now. And even if even when you resign him, he's still going to make a reasonable number. It's not going to be ten million. Um, he's good in the circle, and you know. You know, he's an uber talented guy. You know, look at you know between the legs goal he scored against Baran. He's fast. He's got hands. Um, I I honestly think he'd be a perfect fit for the Rangers. So yeah, definitely around. Much better. Yeah, and then, and you know what? We we threw out everything. And the other thing is, uh, if you get him right now and he doesn't fit in, he's gone. That's he's like the one year of his deal. Yeah. All right. Uh, I do believe somebody asked this to Arthur Staple. We'll have that video again for the short uh, versions. But Ilya Sorokin will take the reins from Simeon Vormolamov. Anthony, it's your question. It's all you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go beer. Um, I think what Staple said is accurate. I think based on just you know um, resume and being that he's the veteran and he's been outstanding. Um, Vormolamov's gonna start the era as the guy. But again, remember, this is an 82 game season. So Sorokin, just on that alone, is going to play more. Um, you know, he proved himself. So I think he'll get more starts. It's just going to matter of, of, you know, how well he plays, how well Varlamov plays. And like Staples said, Varlamov's getting older. Um, you know, there's the Olympic aspect of it. So I, I could see a scenario where at some point during the season, you know, it becomes like a 50 50 split. And then with maybe Sorokin taking the reins at the end. But. Um, in the beginning, it's it's gonna be Varlamov, so that's why I'm not going around here or anything. Um, but I, I do think it could happen sometime in the middle, towards the later part of the year. Phil, I'm gonna ruin this clean sweep thing that we have going. By the way, we should get a broom going across the screen for that. Every time. <laughs> One of those clean sweeps. I'll, I think I'll, would be I'll, awesome. I'll work on that for us. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a shot here. Um, the reason for this is I, I think I might have mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I like the angry face there. Do you like the angry face? I do right. like the angry I, I face there. I need to get there. more animated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like that. But um, while I think it's possible, I, I don't see it happening because, as Anthony said, this is – or as even – I think Staples said it himself. Um, this is the first 82-game season in two years. So – um, it's a lot to ask of a young goaltender like Sorokin who really doesn't have a whole lot of games under his belt to really kind of take, start taking the reins from Varlamov in a season. And Varlamov, you got to remember, Varlamov's been the guy that's gotten them to the conference finals. I mean, Sorokin won them the Penguin Series. Yes, that's true. But um, Varlamov has been the guy that's really carried the, 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 the ship as the number one goaltender. So really to kind of take the reins from him in the first 82 game season back is going to be a really big ask. I don't see it happening. I don't. And another point to that is that, you know, Staple was talking about how Lou isn't going to trust a young player to just take those big minutes. When we're talking about like the defense and the forward positions, he's not going to do the same in net. And that that's just trots. That's what, you know, that's what trots does. He, he leans on his veterans, and I think they're going to lean on Varlamov for at least one more season. Yeah. I think the split will look something like a, I don't know, maybe a 58-24 split for Varlamov to Sorokin, or maybe it could even be a 50-30, but you're going to be looking at something like that, and then I think if Varlamov starts to falter at that point, then Sorokin could. But if Varlamov plays as consistently as he has for these two years so far, for the previous two seasons, then I, I, I think I don't think that's happening. So I'm going to say shot here. I'm going to ruin it as well because uh, I'm going to go buying everybody around on this. The reason why for me is uh, Varlamov has been injury free as an Islander goaltender. So that can come into play. They were adding on if he goes to play for Russia. That's one. Uh, I thought Verlama was going to be the starter after the first round last year. Sorry, I mean Sorokin, I mean, because uh, he was clearly the better goaltender versus the Penguins. And then lastly, I think with the rigors of this season might be physically demanding, and Sorokin might just be better and just take it away. Hey, Brody, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a little bit. 
Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I think they could very well, Sorokin could take this job. Um, moving on to the next one. The Kat Kaniemi offer sheet will be the last we'll see in the NHL for a while. Anthony? Um, I, I'm going to go... Oof. And I'll go round. Um, you know, I, I, you know, aside from the Aho off sheet two years ago, you hadn't seen one in a long time. Um, it might have even been the before the before the Aho one. It might have even been the Shea Weber off sheet. Might've Shea been Weber was the. Seen it. No, yeah. no, it wasn't Weber. It was um, O'Reilly, I believe. Yeah, O'Reilly right, by the Calgary Flames. That was. I thought that was. Yeah. All right. So, I mean. I still, I don't, I don't see. Think we're going to see one. They're uncommon just for these reasons alone. Because teams lo- likely know you might, you know, might have uh, some revenge coming down the pike after um, one that long ago, where the the Blues um, and the Canucks got into an offer sheet war with uh, Steve Bernier and Ryan Kessler. There was, it was revenge oh. exacted on that one. <laughs> Um, so that, this is the type of reason why we don't see him. So no, I mean, unless unless a team throws out an offer sheet to a player. Uh, and then the other team responds a year or two later. I, I don't, I don't see it happening. I, I, so I'm, I'm pretty confident when I say our, you know, round here. I think, I think we won't see it quite some time. Uh, Phil, uh, I'm buying everybody around on this. Um, as I said before, we everybody talked about. Well, you don't see see offer sheets and you know and everything like that. And you know, it, this is why. You don't see them because the unwritten rules are there for a reason. And Brian Burke, um, I was watching something on NHL Network, and Brian Burke talked about how the reason why he was pissed at Kevin Lowe for the Dustin Penner offer sheet was because he never got a heads up from him. So when you talk about unwritten rules and you want to sit there and you want to make fun of that, there is a code of conduct amongst these general managers behind the scenes. It really does exist. So don't, don't, don't stick your nose up at it. It does exist. And this is part of why we're not going to see one for, I don't know, another five plus years, I would say. I'm going to go beer because if it makes sense for your franchise, you're going to, you're going to do it. Uh, If you're, let's say for instance, uh, a team that wants a number one center right now and has prospects, Mm galore and whatever like all of us kind of the, the the people in the comments have been talking about this left and right let's say like the new york rangers <laughs> and um uh chris jury pa- paging chris jury hello yes and it's hi so hi it's, chris yeah. jury um there might be this guy out there named elias Pettersson. uh that do you do you have any interest in him <clears throat> and and that's exactly why, folks. That's exactly why. And you know something that's that that's what ha- what will happen. Then they'll go like, look. We'll get him right now. We'll get him for a, a good deal. Um, but it's going to be like it, it's probably going to be more like the Montreal situation where you're not going to risk getting giving up. Uh, I forget what the top tier is. Is it's not five first round draft picks anymore. But no, still, four. I mean, no, it is four. It is four, four and four, I think okay. like a second yeah. rounder or something else. Right. So, I mean, you can rebuild a franchise that way if you're the Canucks just to go find uh, Elias, get the hell out of here. And uh, the Rangers get back Elias Pettersson. Yay. They're, they're all good. And the Rangers, th- their prospect pool is is awesome right now. So why not? The only problem that you have with something like that is that Pettersson is not an 11 plus million dollar player right now as you speak. He could be. He very well could be very soon. But it's it's a risky proposition, and if, if somebody's gonna do it one one of these days, somebody that, is. Uh, I, I'm surprised nobody's done it to Vancouver because they have the problem with their cap space and him and Quinn Hughes. Yes, and that's part of the problem when you pay your your young players too early, um, or when you pay Tyre Myers uh, six million, or when you uh, pay a young center in his third season. Uh, you get him a uh, eight year, ten million dollar a year extension because we're going to Jack Eichel right now, and uh, Pat Brinson, who is a new agent for Brisson. Jack Eichel, just <laughs> see the segue I had right there, will Brisson. help speed up a Jack Eichel trade. And if I could add another name in there, it would be Donald Fear, 
because here's a newsflash for everybody. The NHLPA met with the NHL about the Jack Eichel situation. More on that in about 10 seconds. But I'm going to bribe everybody around on this one. They're going to definitely put the screws to Kevin Adams. And because uh, if this is about players' health, uh, Buffalo's in trouble. And they're going to have to try to find a deal for Eichel right now or let him get the surgery. So that that's going to help things right away. Philk? Yeah, I, I'm going to say a beer here. Um, I, I, I'm i fairly confident it will because of the fact that Pepper Son is the NHL equivalent of someone like Scott Boris or Drew Rosenhaus. He's a super agent. He's arguably the best agent in the NHL for, for anyone's money. If you ask all the, the analysts, the experts, the first name that will come up from them is Pepper Son. And um, – he knows how to work teams, general managers, organizations. He knows all the he knows all the ropes. Uh, no disrespect to Eichel's two previous agents, the two Peters, um, but Pepperson's on another level. And this is a guy who's been around the block more than once. He's dealt with these situations. He's more than well equipped to handle them. So um, I'm definitely very curious to see what happens here. But I, I, I think it will. It's just I, I think there's the surgery part of it is really what kind of keeps the process a little closer to where it is now, but it definitely accelerated and Paprasan is not going to take Kevin Adams his, his, his garbage. He's not going to deal with it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say a beer here. Anthony. Um, I think that the big, the big issue here is the surgery and the timeline. I mean, He's probably going to be out until December. Um, and I think teams are going to be skeptical about trading for a guy um, where they don't know what the results of the surgery is going to be, you know, how he's going to be after he comes back and, and whatnot. And I think that's going to scare teams off because um, they, they just simply don't know. Um, so Pat Prasad, while, you know, he's an elite agent and can probably turn up the heat on Kevin Adams, I, I don't – I don't think it's going to like make wonders where he's going to be traded, you know, tomorrow. Um, but I also do think, you know, he will be traded faster than where if he kept the same representation. Um, but I still think it's going to take a little bit of time here because of his health issues. So um, good move for Jack Eichel to do this, but because he's going to be out for a while, I, I don't think teams are going to be pounding on the door to make this happen by, you know, ASAP. If anything, by the way, all this conversation with Pat Brisson and uh, presumably Donald Fear or whoever the NHLPA is sending there to talk, get the surgery figured out. Are you, are you going to get the surgery or not? And this is this has got to do with Eichel's health. That has to do. And I'm not even saying that as a Ranger fan. That that who knows I might want him. I I, I don't even know anymore. I really don't. <laughs> we've been we've covered Eichel too much on this on this podcast. <laughs> If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.